Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Scratch, this is another Raid Shadow Legends video, I am currently on the test server guys, guess what, we have one more mythical champion to try out, now I don't usually try them all out when they release new champions, but honestly, these two mythical champions are really really awesome, yesterday we tried Alice the Sunbearer, check that out if you didn't have a chance to check it yesterday, what a beast of a champion man, what a beast, and today, guys, we're actually going to try Star Sage Galatir, another amazing champion. But this time around, this is purely a support champion, and it does the job very, very well. Very good base stats, how you may notice, and very fast, too, at 115 speed. With the A1, attacks all enemies, fills the Terminator of all allies by 10%, also fills the Terminator of each ally by an extra 5% if they have any active buffs placed on them by this champion. So... You can get 15% Termiter just from the A1. Just imagine having counter-attack accessories or uh, anything like that. Ally attacks, etc. It will just constantly push your team more and more and more, which is amazing. Then you have the A2. Removes all debuffs from all allies. Heals all allies. Puts a, a block debuffs on all allies and gives them Termiter too. So you're getting a cleanse. You're getting a immunity. You're getting Termiter. You're getting healing. Okay, You're getting lots of things from this champion. Then you have the A3, revives all that allies with 50% uh, HP and Termiter. Also places a perfect Veil buff on all allies, guys, except this champion on a 4th turn cooldown. The passive, this champion receives 5% less damage for each 100 resistance on the champion, stacking up to 25%. Then prevents the champion's death and keeps them alive on 1 HP uh, when hit by a fatal hit. Then equalizes the HP on based on the average of the entire team. We're going to check how that works uh, to be more specific. Uh, then, of course, is the resistance aura. And you have the metamorph changing into this bad, bad looking character. The A1, again, AoE decreases the turn meter. And it decreases the turn meter by a further 5% if uh, the enemies have block active skills, decrease resistance or stun. The A2 attacks all enemies. Before attacking, strips all buffs, puts block active skills, and this will not trigger counterattacks. This is just so perfectly made for Marichka and Taras, guys, because once you lock the block active skills on Taras, he will not be able to counterattack anymore. Marichka won't be able to heal or cleanse, and it will be just amazing. Unfortunately, I am on the test server. The defense teams that I'm encountering here, they're not... Uh, they're not that great. We don't really have many Marichkas and Taras either, so it won't be as easy to prove by point, but we're gonna we're gonna try to do our best. Then we have an increased accuracy on all allies, decreased resistance on all enemies, and a stun on all enemies too, because why not? And the passive uh, increases this champion's accuracy equal to 75% of their resistance when placing debuffs or active uh, activating instant effects. Then if an enemy's accuracy is higher than this champion's resistance, has a 50% chance of transferring any of the crowd control debuffs back to the enemy when placing these debuffs on this champion. So think about a Mitrala, for example, or uh, those sort of encounters, you know. So I have Star Sage built on Stone Skin with resistance, okay? I haven't went uh, full crazy on resistance. It's pretty hard to do it too because we have no Faction Guardians, no Empowerment, no Awakening, so... We have kind of like a limit. My uh, accessories really suck for the high elves. So these are his total stats. 80,000 HP, 4.5k defense, 225 speed, 764 resistance. Now you can create different builds. It really, really depends. You can go with uh, no resistance, go even tankier, much tankier on the HP, faster if you want. I can definitely tell you that this champion will be super powerful for Live Arena. Again, mythical champions, they tend to be very powerful there. And when they have kits like this champion or even Alas, they're like, wow, you know. Then for uh, Masteries, we have um, Defense and Support 3. We have Unshakable S tier 6. And uh, we went down to Lasting Gifts. You can go with Stat Fest if you want, get a bit of uh, extra healing, lay of hands, you know. But it really depends uh, what sort of things you have in mind with uh, with a champion, you know. That's how we're looking. Now, first, we're going to try this champion in Arena. Then we're going to do a run in Hydra and see how well the champion performs in there. It's going to be amazing there, too, because not only that you're getting the Termiter with the A1, is an AoE attack. Uh, 
it makes the champion great on different sets too. You can always use a provoke set if you want just for Hydra. You can always uh, use a completely different build. My main thing is I wouldn't suggest you to sacrifice this champion only for Hydra when it can do so many things. Then the A2 will remove buffs from the enemy, will give you increased accuracy. Again, uh, AoE attack, which doesn't really do nothing, but the first one will boost the Termitor on your team quite a bit, especially if you have ally attacks and stuff, you know. Let's do a couple of quick fights in Arena, guys. We want to see how the passive works. We want to see how good is the champion uh, to support your team. We want to see uh, how good is the block active skills against Marich Kantaras. This team right here has a Georgit, so we have the perfect opponent to uh, hit our champion. He's the lowest HP. So we want to see how the HP equalizes on, uh, on our champion, you know. Georgit, come on, do your job. 155k hit, the passive proc, how you may notice, and the HP equalizes based on your entire Steam HP. So they make an average based on that, rather than just pushing it to full HP because you already have a max HP champion, you know? So it's, it's creating an average as described. So that's, that's still pretty good. It's actually very, very effective, you know? Let's uh, get some, uh, some Termiter with A1. I like that basic skill. Now, the passive is uh, on cooldown, uh, so having a, a revive to come out directly from this champion will be uh, acceptable, but I feel like George, it will end me before I get to, to that part, you know, no matter what I'll be doing. Unless, unless, if, if that hex doesn't reflect it back, we're good, but it did. And it reflected it back from George as well, which is such a shame. Why not from Arbiter, you know? So that's fine. That's basically what happens with the passive, which is good. Now, if we're going to find the Marichka and Taras, we have MTG Jedi here. Let's, let's try to reset and find him again. Come on, come on, wherever you are. MTG Jedi. Now here. Maybe here. No. What are you hiding? There we go. There we go. So let's see how will the block active skills actually work against the uh, some of you guys might not be familiar with it. I'm pretty familiar. I know exactly uh, what it does. Uh, I always used to uh, use it with Lydia on, uh, on Taras before when I had older teams with, uh, with her in the team. So, for example, I'm just going to have to boost the Termiter to make sure I'm fast enough. I haven't built him super fast, so they might just scar on me, which is going to be a bit of a shame. Let's actually put a couple of buffs on. Okay, Taras doing his, uh, his job. Let's try to take somebody down or get close to it. Okay, so one down, man down, extra turn. We increase the cooldowns of the skills. He did the same thing to me. So right now, we're going to go straight to the other form. Now, the problem with this is that it's a very high risk to get polymorph, you know. So for uh, Platinum Arena, it's not really going to be as effective. For Live Arena, again, you're going to find even more ship than in Classic Arena. But it might save you. It might save you, basically, you know. Block active skills. And now, Taras will not be able to counterattack. Whenever we are going to hit Marichka, Taras cannot counterattack, okay? Right there, he actually just used his turn. But he doesn't counterattack with the A2, you see? And that's because we have block active skills on, uh, on him. That's exactly how it works, in case if any of you guys were, uh, were wondering, you know? So let's try to, to take them all down. Beautiful. Right now, let's do that. I cannot swap forms, but I can do this. We dropped a bit of Termiter on them. Okay, she revived. That's fine. I really want to get to the other to the other form, you know. But it's a bit of a problem with that Taras right now. Okay, so if I do this... No! Ah, oh, god damn it. Directly on the revive. Okay. So you've seen it doesn't counterattack. I want to see when the rest of the champions die and that champion is left alive and then the passive comes in play and you revive. How nice, how nice it feels, you know, how nice it feels to have that on. I can go against the MTG Jedi again. So I'm going to take everybody out that has stone skin, you know. We're going to we're going to go in like like this, yeah. Yeah, I like this. This this looks good. Okay. I'm going to let him look me, basically. Okay.
Take them all down. Take them all down. It doesn't even matter. Now, hopefully, he will not in uh, increase the cooldown of any of my skills. Because that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem. So I'm going to do this instead. So they focus on him. Just so they don't inc increase the cooldown of... Actually, he doesn't require accuracy either. So what I'm going to... Let's try to break that... Uh, Stone skin. Okay. Okay, so basically that's that's a bit of a bummer, okay? I w I was actually I was actually thinking that that might happen. Because I have no uh no allies alive. The HP from the passive that gets equalized gets left to one. And because of it, I don't even have a chance to to get to revive because if you just Pinch me, I'm dead. So I, I was actually thinking that this might be the case. It's a bit of a bummer because you might think that, okay, maybe I'm going to get some HP and have a chance to survive and then revive the rest of the team and continue. That's a bit of a bummer. Now, of course, if I'm planning to revive directly instead, so let's, let's go into fight number three and we're going to call it here. It's just kind of like a demonstration of everything that a champion does for Arena. Uh, it will be a complete different story, you know. I'm supposed to bring in the queen, but she has stone skin. It's fine. We might lose this fight again, you know. Okay. So right now, I don't want to revive just yet because uh, they will be annoying, you know. We're going to revive next time. Just because they had too much turn meter. So now we're going to revive. Ah, he locked my skills, man. Seriously? King, what are you doing? What are you doing? So I cannot revive because he locked my skills. What's the chance to lock exactly that skill out of the, the, the two of them, man? Like, serious. Let's go against Jacob. He has a good team and uh, hopefully his Mitrala won't be getting locked. Okay, resisted. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. That's fine. Ooh. That was nasty. That was nasty. Ah, uh, only if I had a couple of buffs on, you see? I forgot to buff. I forgot to buff before. We need to block the revive on that uh, on the enemy. So, right now, I don't want to use this skill. I actually want to change forms. I want to change forms, and hopefully, we're not going to lock Mitrala. Okay, block active skills on the rest. That's good. We lost the king. Ah, oh, we got resisted. Seriously? I think we just got three... Man, it's... Today is just not the day. We're so unlucky with everything to proc, you know? Like, I got 3% on her now. Like, how many fights I need to, to do for every sing little thing that I'm trying to, to show, you know? A thousand? A hundred? Okay. I like that. We drop the Termiter. We revive the, the King. But I need to block Revive. And they need to have three buffs in order for that to happen. So, it's not going to happen just yet. But I'm still going to take him down. Just because I can, you know? Okay. Mitrala. Can you put that on, a, on us again, please? We want to get petrified. At first, I was petrified. It seems like it's not happening. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't you do that. Don't you do that to me, because right now we're about to change Metamorph, and now it's going to be pointless what we're trying to do, but at least we're going to revive. Okay, and she put a hex right now, which it's a, it's a bit of a shame. It's a bit of a shame. Basically, she, uh, the champion does something else with a, with a passive, right? And the passive just proc right now, but on the other, Metamorph has a different passive uh, where the crowd control debuffs will get transferred back to the enemy that has higher accuracy than you. The one that plays them on you as well. So Mitral, I thought that was a good example for Arena. But for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to, to happen. You know, it just doesn't want to, it just doesn't want to happen. The RNG is not on our side either. Let's head over to the Hydra clan boss. Now, I do think that Alas is more, uh, more interesting in a way or another. This champion is very good as a support champion. The passive, especially when you have dead allies and your passive letting you die anyway. Uh, I don't find it as uh, interesting because you don't really get to revive your enemy team unless you really 
get a lot of Terminator. The only way you could potentially do that is by getting a, getting a timely intervention as a mastery. That will boost your Terminator a lot, you know, but it's, it's very unlikely to. So we're going to use this team, guys. We're going to see exactly what we can uh, expect from this champion. I do think as the support is going to be great, we're going to have immunity. You're going to strip buffs from the Hydra. You're going to get a lot of Terminator when you're using the A1. So, for example, if we do this one right here, we are instantly gaining Terminator, right? Because we ally attack. Now, if we are uh, buffing as well and then using the A1, we're gaining even more Terminator. 15% instead of 10, you know? Which is pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Head of Mischief, go down. I will click this on, uh, put this on auto and then just change forms here and there. If you need to revive, you're going to be able to revive because you have this skill. You have the perfect veil, which it doesn't seem to be able to use it anyway because you need to revive. So it's not going to be great just to have the perfect veil as a buff without reviving. FYI, in case anyone was curious. But right now we can put immunity, we can heal, we can gain Terminator, which allows us to get even more Terminator with the basic skill. Just for the simple fact that we have buffs placed by this champion on all of my team. So let's let's check it out. Just having all that Terminator, I think it will be very effective. Especially that I have a Molly tank card in the team too. Boost the Terminator. Okay. That was from Molly. Let's boost the Terminator even more. There we go. So we're constantly gonna gain a lot of Terminator. Which will be actually very, very effective for our team. You might not think that this will increase your damage a lot. But enabling your team to rotate way more often than they normally do, it will actually increase your damage quite a bit, you know, quite a bit. So let's, uh, let's smack the Head of Mischief in here. Okay. That's going down. Ooh, let's imagine that he was stealing my, uh, my buffs. We're going to change to the other form in a second. Uh, we're not going to put block buffs. We're going to let him get some buffs in there. In the meantime, let's just constantly gain... Uh, Gain some Terminator, you know? Gain some Terminator. And after I change to the other form, that's when I'm going to click on Auro, guys. I'm waiting for the Head of Mischief to, to pop out again. I don't want to use the Provoke. Hopefully Molly won't be the only champion getting the, the hits, you know? So check this out. Another ally attack. Bang. Lots of Terminator like this, you know? Lots of Terminator. Turn 5, and it's almost 1 million damage per turn. Of course, it is at the, at the very beginning, but still. We can buff, heal, cleanse, turn meter again. Like, constantly. It's like a roller coaster, you know? Constantly getting that turn meter. Let's put a hex. No need to use the provoke, because we have no head of decay here, no head of mischief to tank for. Plus, we don't want to tank on that either, you know? Okay. More Terminator from Molly. It, it actually feels nice to get to see so much Terminator boost. You know what, what would be cool in this team right now instead of Molly Tankard? To have the, the Archer Queen in here. To get even more Terminator. That would be just crazy. Just imagine all the Terminator from, uh, from everybody. Now, yeah, Molly Tankard does give the Terminator too. So replacing her with the Archer actually, uh, it will still be probably the equivalent actually. Because that's on a on a skill with a cooldown, while Molly's passive is on a one-turn cooldown, right? So that makes a big difference. Probably it's going to be the same thing, actually. But if we replace, for example, uh, let's just say, I don't know, to Hanarak or somebody, you know, that, that would make quite a bit of a difference. So right now, I'm going to change to this form, and let's just say I need accuracy. Let's buff with accuracy and uh, put decrease resistance on the enemy. Amazing stuff, right? You have the decrease resistance. Uh, I feel like, in a way, it's... Uh, in a way, it was going to be better to have decreased accuracy because um, it could be interesting, but that will uh, be counterproductive uh, for the passive, you know, because you need an enemy to have higher accuracy than you in order to transfer back the crowd control debuff to the champion that placed it. Okay. Do we get a head of mischief back or who's, who's coming back? Okay, we have the head of decay. So right now, with this, I can put block active skills uh, on champions only. This will now work on bosses, right? So I can remove buffs from the enemies. And it will trigger no counterattacks, which again, it will be irrelevant for our fight here. But the part of removing uh, buffs, putting increased accuracy on your team, decreased resistance on the enemy, using your metamorph to go back to the other form, 
Perfect. That's what you want to do. You don't want to stay too long with this metamorph because it's pointless. Once you, you, got, you got the job done, move over to the next one, get your support in. It's nice to have these options. The only thing with the metamorph, and I feel like a lot of people are, are feeling it, the ones that have mythicals, is that when you're using the metamorph, you're losing the buffs. You know, So let's just say, for whatever reason, you have one turn strengthen on as soon as you change form you lost that you know if you have stone skin you lost that so they're not as a uh, great when you're changing forms it's not as uh, efficient to do it too often especially if you're uh, relying on those buffs or stuff like that you know now nobody here will actually really really uh buff see no head of mischief so i'm gonna let it go on auto once i'm gonna change to the other form that was my intention to change to the other form, actually. But I think it was on a cooldown. Come on, come on. Go down. Go down. But this is still a strong mythical champion. It's still a strong one. I like it. I, I honestly, I wouldn't mind to summon any, any of the two new ones. You know, Alice or uh, even this one. I do prefer Alice, though, just because he deals more damage and uh, is a very good support champion and damage dealer at the same time, in my opinion. But having these two, bang. Healing. Now, if this passive would work slightly different to really offer you that chance to bring your team back to life and that passive to really keep you alive when, uh, when it happens, I would put more value on the champion. But because if you guys notice how that passive worked, we had no, no teammates alive. We got wrecked and uh, the passive was pretty relevant. It kept us at one, uh, one, uh, one HP, basically. So, uh, yeah, we died but if that would be a bit different i feel like the champion would be in a much better spot as a support champion rather than debuffer you know but like this is still good it's still good just not as uh as good as i thought uh it might be you know not a disappointment necessarily because uh it's still uh providing a, a lot of utility and i feel like a lot of people will be will be fortunate to summon this this mythical you know if you have the books if you have the books, of course. <laughs> we do need those books as well. But there we go, again. Termiter, buffs. You gotta, you gotta love it. Okay, so, yeah, they won't be able to, to buff. We have block, block buffs on all of them. And it seems like there's no head of mischief in here, guys, coming. But you can remove buffs anyway. You, you guys know what it means to remove buffs. I don't ac actually need to clearly show you that, how, uh, how it works. But overall, I feel like he provides a lot of good things for Hydra. You know, like, hands down, we cannot take that away from the champion. Increase accuracy, decrease resistance, cleanse, uh, immunity, healing, turn meter, remove buffs. What else you want, basically? You know, what else you want from a champion? Like, it already does so many things. And, of course, for Masteries, you can always go and pick, for example, a, a War Master and get some extra damage from this champion, too. But then, is not as versatile on the build. It cannot necessarily be used for a uh, for a uh, uh, PvP with those masteries. It's not as uh, as great. I do want to try one quick thing right now because I've just noticed that that is is the perfect perfect scenario for it. I want to change forms and see if I can remove the buff if they have Toxic Cloud because it says. Attacks all enemies, but before attacking, removes all buffs. So we should be able to remove all buffs uh, on anyone with the Toxic Cloud because we're only going to attack after. Yeah? So that's even better. Even better than we initially thought, basically. You know, so yeah. Spot, spot on. Let's free our champion. Yeah, again, no head of mischief. We are out of here. Out of here. A good... A Fairly good demonstration. We reached the damage that we needed for the top chest. And I'm not expecting to see damage from this champion. But what I'm expecting to see is the healing. Now, to Hanarak already heals you, right? 320k. Galatir, 700k. 700k. Very, very good uh, healing from, uh, from here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. What do you think of Galatir, the new mythical champion? And out of the two new mythical champions that were added to the game. Galatir and Alas the Sunbearer. Which one of them would be your most wanted? Probably for me would be Alas, you know? I just feel like he's more, uh, more interesting. He just looks more badass. He's, he's just dealing a lot of damage. And uh, 
I would I would like to get him over uh, the other one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Much love, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.